All right, y'all. So I'm still up. And as the Lord is ministering to me, I'm going to come and minister to you, okay? So I was listening to, you know, listening to my um gospel music, too. And eat me a little bit of these uh Cajun boiled peanuts. And 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. To be sober means to get your mind together. You got to get your mind together with when you renew your mind with the word of God. Do y'all not know that the enemy, he comes in our lives to really destroy us. That's why we have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful of what we let go into the ear gate, what we let go into the eye gate, and what we let go into the mind, and what we let take root in our heart. The enemy if you think about all the things that you've been involved, you might have got in a bad relationship. You said, honey, I was in a bad relationship. Do you not know the devil, he really wanted to take you out in that relationship? His design was for to take you out. See, our enemy is not coming to play with us. He doesn't come to make us just have a bad day. Honey, that's just the devil. You know, he's going to do what he do. No, he's strategic. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. That's his job. He ain't coming to play. He ain't coming to make you just have a bad day. A lot of things in our lives, if you think back of the things that you might have got involved in, you know, you went to a party. It was just a party and you took one drink. You know, all your friends were drinking, so you'd say, hey, I'm going to take a drink too. Now, years later, you still drinking. Because the enemy has a plan to destroy us. You know, you say, well, you know, I'm just going to hit it one little time. You know, that's it. Now you doing this. Because the enemy, your adversary, the devil, he, he is strategically watching you. He wants to destroy you. That's why there's a lot of things. That's why parents tell their children, you can't go everywhere. And it's with adults too. The enemy, he studies us, y'all. He's, he's been here from eons to eons. He studies us. He know you like to be complimented. He know you like to get praise. He know you done took pride in all your following. He know you a passing. You done took pride because you done been on that platform. You been on that platform. He comes in a very subtle way. He studies us. You remember when he approached God? And the Lord asked him, where have you come from? He said, I've been walking up and down the earth. I've been walking up and down the earth, Lord. That's what he said. When he stood before God and the sons of men, I think it says. The enemy comes, y'all, to destroy us. That's why we got to be so careful. Especially when you're in ministry or you're doing business, whatever you're doing, don't get caught with the spirit of pride. It's so subtle. You got people now that's, you know, they, they say they prophets. Not saying that God didn't matter, called them, but some kind of way because we love praise. We love to get something right. We forget to give God the glory and we think we are winning the battles. We think we begin to think we are calling the shots. We begin to take the glory. When we say things like um Hold on, y'all know why this. When we say things like, honey, I don't know, 
did 10 prophecies and ain't one of them fell to the ground. That's pride. Or I got this many uh, people pat me on the... That's pride. Jesus never talked like that. He said, I only do what my father called me to do. And that's where I want to be. I just want to do what God called me to do. Everything I do, I just want him to be glorified. If I minister and all you can get away from me talking to you is, oh, Yvette, honey, she, she's good. Throw it in the trash can. When I minister... You know, I know God used people. I understand that. And I believe in giving people honor where honor is due. But don't let it be a thing where that pride takes hold in your heart, if y'all understand what I'm saying. If you don't leave, I got a friend I talk to. And every time we have a conversation, I'm more hungry to follow God. So every time you have an encounter with a woman, a man of God, just a just a Christian person somebody that loves God, it should cause you to want to follow after him. What did the men of God say when they was talking to Jesus? They said, did not our hearts burn? Your heart ought to burn. Something ought to almost persuade you. Ain't that what the king said? He said, I'm almost persuaded to be a Christian. Something should almost pull you towards Christ. As a Christian, we minister or teach or wherever we are, even just being in the, our present because of God, not us, but because of God. Just a hello, you know, just a regular conversation. It ain't got to be nothing deep. You ought to sense something about God. Something ought to make you pull towards God. That's why. When we preach, preachers, when you preach, because you're preaching the gospel, you got to preach about sin. You can't just preach, you know, oh, they, 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 you know, beautiful flowers over here and God going to do this and God going to do that. But you also got to repeat, Peter, you also have to preach about sin. You got to come out of sin. You got to come out of the world. And the reason so many people are, Packing out churches and being drawn to um, superstars in the gospel because there, there's no preaching. The whole Bible. There ought to be, when you hear the word of God, there ought to be some type of conviction. If somebody preaches to you and you're never convicted of your sins, you sitting under the wrong preacher. There ought to be some type of conviction in your heart. Lord, I, I need to I need to repent. I need to come to God. When the men, when the disciples preached, people, they said people were joined to the church. They turned their lives around. But we're living in an era now where I just don't want to go to church and have a good Sunday service. Child, didn't we shout? Girl, we told the flow up. And guess what? On our way to hell. Nothing, nothing that was said causes us to say, you know, I need to go ask for forgiveness. You know, I need to come out of sin. I really need to change my life. I'm telling y'all, these are the last days. And we must get our minds together. Be sober minded. Because your adversary, now you might say, I don't believe in the devil. You ain't got to believe in him. Just like you ain't got to believe in gravity. But I promise you, if you jump off the top of a building, you gonna fall. You can stand at the top of baby, I don't believe in gravity. Jump. Gravity gonna prove itself. You ain't got to believe you're, you, there's a devil. You ain't got to believe you got a personal adversary. You can take the devil lightly. People joke about it. Not the day, devil. We make fun about him. But he's real. And everything that he brings in your life is not to play patty cake with you. And this is not to make you fearful, but this is just to bring awareness to, to the spirit, up to spiritual things. 
Everything that the enemy comes and throws in your life is not to play patty cake. He really coming to destroy you. I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to just burn a little bit of sage. You know, I'm going to read my horoscope today. Not realizing you're opening doors for the devil. We're going to just dress up as a monster for Halloween. You're opening doors for the devil. I ain't got to forgive nobody. They did this to me. I ain't, I ain't forget. You're opening doors for the devil to come and wreak, ha bring havoc in your life. That's why our minds are not settled. Some of us can't shut our minds down because we have open doors. It seemed like mm, it was nothing. The enemy is not playing. He going to cover it up. Whatever the sin is, he going to make it light. He going to make it little. But it's opening up doors that you invite him in. Who would invite someone in their home to come and unalive them? Nobody. But see, the devil ain't going to just come and knock on your door and say, hey, I'm the devil. Let me in. No, he going to come in subtle. Did God say? He gonna always come in to make you rethink what God says. He gonna always come in and make you doubt what God has said. Did God say? That's how he comes. You know, you can be great too. You know, you can have this too. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Girl, ain't nothing wrong with that. We human. Be careful. Be careful. Your adversary. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Get your mind together. Be vigilant. Because your adversary. Who is my adversary? My neighbor. Sister said. The devil. Who was cast down to earth. That's your enemy. As a roaring lion, you know the roar of a lion can be heard from miles away. He comes to rattle you. He comes to shake you. He comes to bring fear. The Bible says he's walking about. He's peeping in my window. He peeping in your window. And he's looking for whom he may devour. Devour means to consume whole. The devil don't come. He's not coming to just take pick, you know, pieces of you. I just want to take a piece of that. Let me try to get this. You know, I, I might try to, you know, let me tap her mind. Let me tap her loved one. Let me tap this. Let me, no, he coming to swallow you whole. He come to devour you. He's coming to devour you. That's why you better make sure that you're in the faith. Make sure that you're in the faith. Be sober-minded. What does the scripture say? Stay with the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. Because you got an adversary. And he ain't and he not playing no game. Be aware. Be sober-minded. All right, so I just wanted to share that. Y'all be blessed.